Uh, uh, so today, today is the third day of of the of the challenge. So I expect like some of the things that I'm going to say or going to go through are like you already um, maybe been through. Um, but like I, I'm going to try to like uh, just a brief introduction first, and then uh, about what's like uh, um, partly about fi fine tuning, and um, then uh, going to run through an example, which is just um, I mean following this uh, source, which yeah, you have like in the in the documents or shared. It's like a follow along. You can even see like there, they have a notebook somewhere, and um, and uh, then a bit extra in the end about like uh, how to do uh, to use a parameter efficient fine tuning and LoRa. Um, um, in the end, a little bit. Okay, so just starting. Uh, I'm going to be using uh, like. Um, uh, okay, just to speak about fine tuning. So, um, like, uh, this is what we like. There are, um, uh, so this is a general pre training of, uh, of uh, an LLM model. You have like a large set of uh, training uh, data set, and the model is trained under uh, unsupervised pre-training and then um it's uh, i mean the model itself can be fine-tuned or like uh, you can find like uh, models that are just like went through all of these steps but the fine-tuning is something that you do uh, like use this model which is already there like you have like uh, the weights have been trained and this model had like some kind of it's a language model that have some kind of understanding of the of the of the of the this training basically makes the model um, gain understanding basically of language and it's able able to do multiple natural language uh, tasks and uh, natural language processing tasks and then it can be fine-tuned to uh, to like uh, either like uh, focus on a particular domain maybe let's say um this uh large model was um, trained for english on a uh, like a large uh, corpus of uh, english language from the internet and then it can be fine-tuned on a on a data that is like from let's say from archive like only scientific papers and then it's true that fine tuning is makes it uh, like specialized in the in in the scientific domain uh, basically so in the fine tuning you can do a full fine tuning uh, which basically updates uh, all the parameters you can choose also to do like a um, a parameter efficient fine tuning which is like only um okay this uh <clears throat> the efficient fine tuning like you add um a, a set of, of of new parameters and then you you train your model just to freeze the 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 weights and then you um uh train to only fix these uh, new parameters you had and that's like also at use for you like um a model that uh, is capable of like uh, achieving a, a good performance with only training a small subset of, um, of parameters. You also can do, which is not here, but like you can do fine tuning by freezing the, like some of the weights you can see, like these weights I'm not going to touch just by hand. And then I'm going to fine tune only a set of parameters, let's say the final layers. And and uh, and you can also achieve like some kind of performance. We're going to to, to do like um, one of these in the example, basically. So uh, in the code itself, I'm going to use um, a hugging face transformer library. Um, and I'm installing uh, connected. So okay, so I'm installing like the transformer. I was just following this, the development. Um, 
um, version. So it's in, it includes uh, the transformer. Uh, sorry, the hugging face transformer library itself is built on uh, using it uses in the back end. It uses like a PyTorch and TensorFlow to do the to handle the deep learning uh, or the language models. But um, uh, if you install it by itself, you will need to, to install Torch by uh, uh, separately, I think, or other libraries. I'm installing the here. I'm installing that. Is this? I'm installing most of what I will need in one step. Uh, okay. Uh, so when you said we said we uh, I talked about like uh, doing fine tuning, said like you can't fine tune for a particular process and um, uh, a natural language model process. And I mean, um, depending on what you want to do, of course, you will train your model to do uh, like one of the like um, examples of, of um, natural model, natural language uh, processing tasks that you can do is um, um, like I have examples here, like uh, sentiment analysis and text generation, mask fling. There is token classification. It's like a, a general term with like uh, you have named entity recognition, uh, part of a speech tagging, chunking. Are these are all um, examples of natural um, NLP tasks. I have question answering and uh, okay so the kind of models that are best to, to do each of these tasks uh, is um before the fine tuning i'm talking about the base the base model uh this base this part uh i mean if you um uh, like, for example, it depends on how the, the base model was trained itself. So they don't, um, uh, for example, uh, encoder, uh, encoder only, um, <clears throat> uh, encoder only uh, models, um, uh, LLMs, encoder only, these are best for uh, text generation. Um, sorry, the other, the other way around. Uh, encoder only is our best for understanding like the context, uh, feeling like um, missing um, words. Uh, and so they are, um, uh, these are like uh, the example is for this is BERT, and it's best for like doing this classification tasks and like uh, question answering from context. Uh, while decoder, um, decoder only uh, models like uh, gpt are are better for like uh, text generation and the question answering from from uh, uh i mean a generative question answering uh, i mean you're taking these base models and then you fine tune them for extra tasks so but i mean you have to like think about what base model you're going to use for before you fine tune it and um, yeah, so this, uh, I don't know if we like uh, want to go through this. This is just, just like example of what is this uh, task. Uh, so let's say I'm going to use uh, this transformer pipeline. So this pipeline is, um, in the pipeline, of course, you can include the to tokenizer, uh, the model and pre-process, post-processing. So, um, here I'm not doing any fine tuning anything. I'm just using. I'm going to use the the, uh, the model. That's all. Um, so uh, uh, there is in and in, in uh, hugging face. If you like, there are default. Uh, I mean, this pipeline. <clears throat> of course, I can actually define the the model and the, like the tokenizer the model and how like the data set i'm using or whatever sorry the post-processing i will do so the, uh, the pre-processing is the tokenization and uh, you have the model and the post-processing of course is like uh, the 
decoding the 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 output and maybe there are other stuff that has to be done depending on the model or depending on what you want to do uh, but i'm just here I'm, I'm using this pipeline only just to um there because there are like default uh predefined uh pipelines basically to do particular tasks in hugging face and you can see here um so it's doing this it's loading a, a, a model and it's going to be ready to be used for inference and you can see like here for sentiment analysis the the model is used is uh, this this uh, distilled bird uh fine tune sst to and then just like it's a sentiment analysis so it's going to give me labels uh positive or negative with some kind of confidence score and see like uh, for example like i'm inputting it's a beautiful morning um and then it gives me positive with a score of 99.99 percent so it's very confident that it is positive uh like um okay this is another example this week's challenge is very confusing and then it's giving me negative so yeah so this i'm just using like uh um a default model but and in this inference what you need to see is that like the input and the output will depend like on uh, on the model like this model uh, outputs a label and a score then um as this is another example just to there is this zero shot classification that uses uh, like a different uh this is facebook bart large mnli and of course you can see like uh, the model card on hugging face um you can see here like you can see information about it um so what it does and uh, they can also see like examples anyway um this um so the input it takes is like a text and labels so you have to define is that why it's called zero shot because it's thought you the labels are not predefined you can define them in the input like for example here i'm inputting a, a sentence and or text and then i'm like the kind of level is like education politics or business i'm just asking it to classify whether whatever in my in um my string is in my input whether it is like one of these three um more related to one of these three and like this is a typical introduction to hugging face transformer library which is not true but like i mean just a a sentence and then um the scores I get is the output, the sequence itself, um, the levels and the scores, and it's giving me like it's it's like eighty percent, eighty three percent from education, and um, yeah. So these are like a couple of uh, NLP processing processes and like the how the models for them look like. Um, I mean, example. Uh, models um why am i talking about this is the thing is that um i mean it's just like uh for for this challenge you have to do one of the tasks you have is to do like uh, um one of these nlp you have to find one for one of these, one of these um nlp processes uh so okay task sorry nlp part task um okay and the question so far or should we like uh move on to the next part um okay so i assume everything is fine so far um um okay so uh, 
All right. So, uh, okay. Um, before, um, before moving on to the example that I'm going to go through, um, I'm going to go through a, uh, another one here, just a little bit because I want to explain. Um, is this one point about? Uh, okay, so suppose I'm going to. I want to do. Uh, sorry, one second. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Sorry. Uh, okay. Just um, uh, uh, okay. So in this uh, part, I'm going to be um, uh, uh, pre -tra oh, sorry, fine tuning a pre trained model, which is um, I'm using this um, distal bird base and uh, the goal of the training is to train this model for to to be able to tell me if i took two sentences or two like uh, phrases are equivalent or not so it's a classification um i wanted to be able to classify um um it's a classification problem basically and uh, for that, I'm going to use uh, the class of auto model sequence classification. So the base model is this one. And um, um, OK, so the base model is not, OK, we'll see this in a moment. Uh, OK, so we know that, um, I mean, you, you did this before, like the tokenizer is also, you can get it from the model. Um, and you can see, you can try like uh, how the tokenizer works. Um, but I mean, this is like something that you already did. Um, uh, all right. So, uh, so there is this thing about uh, I have auto model. The auto model is the base is um, basically yeah. It's, it gives me the base model. We, we are not going to be using this. But I mean, uh, like what we're talking about here is this um, that uh, when we do fine tuning, uh, or like uh, for the LLM model, there is this um, um, the model can have have like a, when it's fine tuned for like a, a classification or. Um, whatever other NLP process, uh, what is fine-tuned is particularly is like the last layers, 
which is called the head while this is a base like this is like where the embedding is to, like we have embedding the layers um i mean you talked about this yesterday like it's um which are trained when the the model is pre-trained and then you have like all of these layers for pre-training i mean all of it can be like pre-trained but i mean in the end what differs uh if you have a model like a baseball or um let's say um um like example of a, a base model that can do many things like uh, let's say gp3 gpt3 and then uh on top of it you can have like it can be fine-tuned for many nlp pros nlp tasks and uh, um so it's, it's the last layers that are different so here when i am this is a uh sorry the base model or okay the base model but it's um uh um so the output of this is uh guess what's called one second sorry it's uh Sorry, uh, do you hear me well? Information, oh, okay, good, sorry. So, um, uh, yeah, so I was explaining this um, diagram. So, so this is just understanding. It's, it's not like, uh, it, it, it will not, we're not going to, to you don't, maybe you don't need to worry about this so much, um, like when you do the code, but understanding it is, is useful. So when you have um, the, if this is a, like a, a fine-toned um, LLM, the input that you get, like you have uh, here, you have text, it's tokenized, um, tokenized into like, um, uh, you get a vector of tokens and then it's joined through the embedding layers into like uh, these vectors. Um, uh, in the beginning, before the model is trained at all, everything is like uh, initialized maybe randomly, all the weight and all like um, the embedding. And then through the training, the model learns um, the pre-training, which includes like uh, this uh, task of uh, self-supervised uh, of um, uh, like um, uh, either like um, um guessing the next word or um uh feeling uh, like their mask mask uh, mask modeling uh basically um when what the word is removed and then the model tries to learn how to predict that word so, so through this um self-supervised um training uh the models the model uh, learn the embedding and the weight that in the end it becomes um, a, a model that is has some kind of understanding of the of the language with uh, fine tuning uh, which is supervised. Uh, you have labeled data set which is smaller in size compared to the pre training. Um, uh you you in the end you have you can have it uh like input maybe depending on what you you um uh trained it for fine-tuned it for it can be like a, you can enter like um uh, a sentence and you get cl uh, cl uh, labels uh for like like we did before positive or negative for sentiment or maybe it will recognize like uh, give it a sentence and it gives you like uh, what is the the, as a, a named entity recognition so it tells you like this is uh, let's say like uh, my name is empty nan i work at 10 academy to tell me like empty nan is the name and 10 academy is an organization um okay so uh, what i was talking about is this uh, 
base model and the head, uh, just this looking inside the fine tune model, um, there are like the head part. Um, between these two parts, uh, the input here is, of course, sorry, the input to the whole text, to, to the whole model is text. And then the output from this part is what is called hidden states, which is uh, tensors, basically, that includes um, uh, the, like, uh, the understanding, the model understanding of, of the language. And then these hidden states are included to the head, and the head in the, in the end uh, outputs the, uh, like, um, decodes and, and outputs what, like, the text or, or whatever we're expecting from the, from the model with in understandable human language. Um, okay. So, uh, so basically, oh, okay, all of what I'm saying there here, if I, I'm, I'm choosing a particular model, I can load it using what is called, what the, uh, the class auto model, but this model is going to output for me uh, these hidden states. So you can see like, uh, um, basically these hidden states are like a high dimensional vector representation of the contextual understanding of the input. And then, um, and this is the size, the buff size, the sequence length, and the hidden size. This is like, uh, just to see, like, um, um, okay. So it's a big, but okay. Let's, someone, let's see. It. Um, Um, so yeah, so just a huge tensor. Um, uh, but the whole the same model, I can load it to to add the head. Basically, this is use uh, auto model sequence classification, as I said, because I want to fine tune it for a classification problem. Um, to tell me whether two sentences are equivalent or not. Uh, I'm going to use this. So the outputs here are going to be labels. So yeah, OK, if my in input was like I had a, a list, basically. So that's why I'm getting two by two. It's a two by two t uh, tensor. <clears throat> um, um okay yes yeah, so all right um that, that's basically what i want to say about this uh it's, uh, there are many several classes about this depending on what you want to do so uh there are different structure architecture from a transformer and you'll have like this like a uh, co uh, causal LM, mask LM, multiple choice, question answering, sequence classification, token classification, there is sequence to sequence. Um, I mean, there are, it's not an exclusive list. Um, okay. Um, so just the choice will depend on, uh, uh, on what you want to do. Um, okay, so just to move on to like an actual example, I'm going to go through the whole thing here, hopefully. We have enough time. Okay, um, so far, I hope this is well, not too confusing. Um, any questions so far? Everything is clear, let's zoom and okay. Uh, okay, so this is, um, I am connected to, uh, so here I'm going to install two transformers and accelerate, which accelerate is good for like polarization. Um, okay, let's run. Uh, fine, so uh, uh, what I'm doing here is the structure fine tuning. 
exactly. So I'm taking llama to this is my base model, and I'm I'm uh, fine tuning it for instruction following. It's actually fine tuning. And um, okay, so first I have to prepare my data, and I'm here. They're getting alpaca EP4, EPT4 which I mean, uh, I have it here, but like, uh, let me open it or else. Um, just look at it. it's a big file. So that's over here, okay. All right, so this is the, the data that's already ready, basically. So it's what, like the kind of thing that I want my model to do is to get an instruction, an input or a context, and this an output. You can see like, uh, for example, this is give me three tips for staying healthy. And the output is one, eat a balanced and nutritious diet. And I, I cannot see the rest of it, but okay, this is like um, how the, my data looks like. Uh, of course, in your case, or in many cases, maybe you don't have the data ready in the in the formats that you need. So you have to do that in the pre-processing step. Uh, clean it. So this data is already re ready. Uh, of course, searching on um, on um, Huggyface itself, it has data sets. Uh, so you can look uh, there for, um, uh, I mean, whatever kind of data set you want. Uh, you might find something like, depending, you can find something that is, um, uh, all right. Um, okay, so I loaded my data set called Alpaca, and there's I'm seeing examples of it here. Um, as I said, starting input and output. So, uh, so, th so this is like a supervised, um, uh, basically, uh, so I'm giving, uh, I would be giving um, uh, by my model uh, <clears throat> in the training, I'm, give, I'm going to give it uh, like a, a full input. So instruction, input and output. And then I'm, uh, um, in the evaluation, then I will measure like by removing the output, uh, I'll measure how how good it was it is performing. So the step the next step is going to split my data into train and evaluation. So I'm just choosing to evaluate on a thousand um, thousand uh, uh, samples for the evaluation data set. Okay, uh, so, all right, so like my, the data set I have is like, is the format is instruction input and output in a dictionary, right? But my model, my base model doesn't take this. Well, I mean, I do, I do, it's, a, it's a text completion, uh, basically. So for that, I'm going to give it a, a prompt that will take uh, the, um, say, for example, here, uh, uh, this is a prompt without um, without a context and a and, uh, prompt with context. So yeah, so prompt is below is an instruction that describes a task, write a response that is appropriately completes the request, and then instruction, uh, we'll have an instruction and the, uh, and the response and then like and uh this is a prompt it's, it's the model is supposed to complete after this um in some cases i will have context so i will take that here uh, i mean given paired with an input that provides further context right the response appropriate complete the request and then yeah so i'm having i'm defining these two functions to take my um uh, my uh, my data to and change to change to the prompt that I'm going to use with my uh, with the model. Um, so this is just an example how this works. So this is uh, the data as it, before it was. Uh, 
uh, uh, so you see like this example doesn't have a context here. It was just like a general thing. Uh, describe example of time use influence uh, use influence in a positive way. I don't know what that's about actually. But okay, this is just an example and this is the prompt we get. Um, um, okay, like, um, all right, so um, uh, uh, to to like uh, I, because I have two cases. Sometimes we don't. I don't. We don't want. I don't want this. I don't want uh, the input to be empty here. Uh, I just. I will not have it when it's not. When there is no context, I will not have this part. That's why I define this as a function. Uh, so define like unify this too. To um, if there is name input, use the other form of the of the prompt. And then I'm gonna like uh, create uh, the prompts for all the data set um, together. Uh, actually, I shouldn't like uh, the data set. I already split it up, so I shouldn't need this. I already have like uh, train and evaluation data sets that I already split. Um, yeah, so just looking at the example from the trains should be different each time. I mean, split it randomly. Yeah, okay. So this is the example I saw just before. Uh, all right. Uh, so as was discussed yesterday by by NetNile, there is this uh, end of string tokens, which are like uh, depending on um, the tokenizer and the model you're using. Um, uh, we're going to use this to pad the the the, dat the data, like the input. When I when I'm going to the okay, sorry. So of course, like any um, NNL. Uh, uh, neural network model um, you can input uh, the input can be give it's through in the training the input can be given to the to the model in like one by one one sample by one sample which is super inefficient uh, but you can also use uh, batching so like put um, multiple examples together uh, and that's what we like um, our what we're going to use, of course, of, and this is also particularly necessary when we want to use parallelization or like data parallelization, basically. Uh, padding is that uh, when you want to unify basically the length of our input um, in, in a patch and to, to pad, we're going to pad with this end of a string um, token. Okay, so. Uh, Right, so, um, okay, so I'm padding the whole thing. Uh, sorry, I'm just adding like end, uh, end of, uh, like this is end of string token at the end of the, of the output. Okay, so this is not like, um, just, um, um, Right, so I'm just like defining here, these are the labels, uh, sorry. Okay, so. Um, yeah, so before when I created the prompts, of course, I separated the outputs, uh, like I left the outputs out. So this because these are like the labels that I want my, my, um, my model to to generate to predict um so yeah so i'm i'm, I'm like padding them like separately I'm just adding like this end of the of, of string uh token at the end of each um but i still have um a, a, st uh, a list of of outputs of course uh so uh, okay i'm going to put back the um the the sorry the 
the output basically in in my uh, sorry so i made the train the train data set in in uh, like a dictionary that includes the prompt separated from the output and then an example which has the both of them together um so this is not the padding part yet but uh, i'm just talking about like um i'm reorganizing basically the data set here uh, so while the so this is like uh, uh okay sorry yes to um this is like the example have everything together here but like just to see um so the prompt here that's what i have right now so this is a prompt and the example puts back the response that is like um i have in the data set basically uh all right uh so this is um at this point i'm going to get uh, llama so uh to get llama we will have to use like uh um uh because yeah i mean cannot get it just without you need to use like the hugging face token to to get llama the llama model um yes i have to enter it. Uh, and i don't want to do any of this i don't want to include the get credential so no so i logged in basically in hugging face and then this point i can get them all so this will take some time just to load it um and uh okay so i'm getting uh like i'm sorry i'm i'm, I'm using the the tokenizer not the model um so just to like hear like like how to i mean how the tokenizer here works um you can see like uh i mean how it was like in, uh, encoded so you have like the end of string token and then like basically it's like words are separate um i mean uh so yeah this is a padding part um Padding is means like I can fix the length of the, in, the input. For example, here I have a sentence and then I say like the max length is that it has to be 10 tokens. And return tensor, like I have a PyTorch tensor. Um, so you can see like the original, the, sorry, the original uh, token, uh, tokenized um, input was this. So it was like uh, seven numbers. I have those, but then I have it padded by uh, it two is just like um, I'm using the default uh, uh, token for for the model, which is like um, it is coded by two. Um, uh, okay, uh, okay. So uh coming back to what i wanted to say before is that in the, we want to create batches of the of the data set that uh, have uh, like a uniform length um to and to pass them to 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 like in, in the training and so i'm using like uh let's say the 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 length we have is like 100 uh, sorry, 1024. 24. So this, okay, wh uh, what does this affect? Is what aff I mean, each patch is going to be, I'm using here like um, um, whatever number of GPUs you're using, but I mean, then you'll have like uh, each GPU has a, like a particular memory and the size of the patch will affect 
uh, uh, like the memory that is going to be used. So, um, uh, of course, to make like uh, to be able to make this um, um, the data set. Um, so, uh, uh, okay, so in this part where we're, um, there are there are like uh, shortcuts for this or like that. Um, if you're using that the library t t tlr from from hugging face you can do this like in in one step basically but here like i'm taking the pains to actually define this so um here what i'm doing is that um when i'm like uh tokenizing the the examples here from like uh all together like with the tokenizer and then uh, i'm extending all of all of them uh sorry just I, i'm adding them together and to um uh okay so uh, like uh, I'm choosing like uh, the maximum length here. Um, um, so making sure that I have like I will have uh, so instead of uh, I'm going to put like sorry that's what I'm trying to do just to explain it in a so yeah I'm trying to just pat pack the, my data set in this way. So it will have one, like, okay, so first I'm going to put them like in, in a list or it has to be like 1,024 1, tokens. And then I'm going to like pad them uh, to maximum length. So I'll have a patch like that looks like this. EOS is uh, this uh, token that it's like uh, that my model knows how to ignore it basically or to not pay attention to it um uh okay so so this function only just does this <clears throat> uh um but after after doing this like instead of what was it like before like have with the length we, we know the length of the training set but let's just have it here train that is set how long what is was so it had fifty thousand um samples and now after packing it it's like uh, <clears throat> 11 sequence of length 100 uh 1024 so i did this part this part basically and um i'm going to now uh to load um so yeah so here i'm defining the the the, the patch size 16 okay so this depending on the RAM, as I said before, so like 16 and I had it like as a, um, a thousand twenty four. This like um, works like I have a GPU with like 40 uh, gigabytes of RAM in, in my case. But I mean, you will have to if you're do doing uh, using a different. Um, wow, it's uh, very late. Uh, OK. Uh, if you're using a device, different spe different specifications, you have to find it like change this, uh, and maybe even in your case, I'm not sure if you can run this specifically without having like doing some kind of modi more modifications. But I mean, um, uh, so yeah, what I did here is that like I have the data loader, which is like from from Torch. Um, and uh, define the patch size for it and then um 
um it's like uh um <clears throat> so it should produce for me like equal uh tensors of like uh of equal size um so yeah so again can like uh, decode back and see what is the input in each part um fine so just to move on quickly uh, in the training uh, i'm defining here the training uh, configuration uh, like uh, the data set the precision this is like um uh mixed precision as this is uh, like reduces the the memory needed for um for for uh the ram that is needed by like uh, lowering the precision of of or like uh, yeah using mixed precision basically it's like um it how to say smartly uh, lowering the precision of the weights of particular weights uh, in the in the training um so what's also important here i'm defining the number of epoch uh, that i'm using i'm using three um as a learning uh, rate um okay here this is important i'm free i'm going to freeze to uh, okay so my model has um 32 layers and uh, this lama 2 model i'm going to freeze 24 and train only the last eight um what else here is important um okay so there is this gradient accumulation steps um here i'm defining them to be two this what is this is that is just like effectively increasing the batch size uh the, uh, two yes i'm just telling them the the training that uh, not to not to update um freeze the like not to update the weight and update the weight after two two times after two runs so like i'm just basically uh doubling the batch size basically uh, in my case um so i'm just defining this so it, it, i'm using here simple names namespace but uh in in trans in the hugging face there is a class uh or they can you can um, use training uh, arguments actually you can define there your training configuration that you want to use and um uh of course like uh, the training steps is a number of epochs uh, and uh, uh, the um uh, the data um the batch data uh divided by the gradient accumulation steps so uh, yeah, so this is the number of, of training steps that we're going to run, 1051. So yeah, so this, um, I'm loading here, I'm loading the model, the model ID. And here I'm using quantization, basically I'm, I'm loading it in this using um, big quantization. Right. Um, I thought it will take time. So I'm not going to be able to run this like uh, in time, but okay. So, um, so yeah, so here, like I can just uh, from the model, I can get the number of parameters. Um, so, so yeah, parameter count from the model. So um this is a function that will like count for me the trainable the trainable parameters and then i'm going by hand as i said before there is this uh, uh parameter efficient fine tuning that uses laura and stuff but here i'm going to like uh, freeze by hand uh, first i'm going to freeze uh, all um um disable all the gradients so basically freezing the the weights um and then 
um and then i'm going to unfreeze like uh, only the ones that are like in the layers that i don't want to freeze so um, i said like i want to freeze the first 24 24 layers so from 24 and to the end i'm going to unfreeze um the parameters here so yeah and um And yeah, of course, I'm going also freeze the embedding because I'm not touching the embedding. Uh, so you can see that from the total number of parameters of 6,000, uh, well, uh, 6 billion, right? It's a 7 billion. I'm going to only train um, one, one billion. Right. Um, is that doing this correctly? All right. So um, for the optimizer, I'm going to use, OK, uh, uh, Adam uh, optimize, optimizer with, OK, this is like um, learning rate. And the bit, this is the definition of the Adam optimizer. And then the scheduler, which is like um, uh, how, how the learning rate is, is um, updated. I'm going to use the cosine schedule scheduler with warm up um, and define a loss function, which is going to be just cross entropy, um, cross entropy function, loss function. And um, um, okay. Um, here, just to, I'm going to set it so that I'm going to evaluate every, with every epoch, basically. I'm going to evaluate the, the model. And, um, so this is, um, Um, so, uh, this is like a, the generate is like the inference, uh, uh, function. So entering a prompt and, uh, like a max new tokens and, um, uh, generation configuration if I have more here. So this is like a tokenized prompt. This is like what is going to enter to to the to the model and uh, the output um, I would get it from from like generate and then tokenized prompt. And yeah, so this is like uh, um Yeah, so this is like um, uh, um, in the end, yes, I'm going to decode this. Um, so this is like um, to, so this is what I, I will use this to, to evaluate. So I, what I want is to compare um, the, 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 the output. So you can see this, like what's it, what does it generate? will do is going to give me so here i didn't fine tune the model yet i just like um uh, i'm just trying it um this is just a function to format the output of the of the model in the way that we want it basically and see like uh i'm taking an example like below is an instruction to that describes the task paired with the input that provides for the context write a response that appropriately compares the request so this is my prompt the instruction was add of add verb the sentence to make it sound more interesting and the input is she cooked chicken so so this is like uh, this part is like uh, the example we have right and um, and the response we get from 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 the so the, I, I give this, the prompt I'm giving to the model is this, like up to the response, and I'm asking it to complete, right? 
So what the model gave me is this. Sorry, the rest of it. You see, this is the this is the response of my of my model as it is not fine tuned. So it gave like he cooked uh, the chicken with a vengeance. Okay, so it's funny. Uh, and then it generated an instruction and input a response, instruction input and response. So it's not doing what exactly I'm, I want. I wanted us only to to create a response, right? But because it's just a, a model completion, it just like thought like I'm going to do the same thing again, and um, generated other examples like add a verb to the sentence to make it sound more interesting. He was a man of few words. And the response is a man of a few words and even fewer gestures. Again, it sounds funny, but I mean, it's not what I want. Okay. All of this, it's, it's uh, like the model defaulted to, to create more examples of the whole thing. Um, okay. Uh, while, like, okay, from, um, what I have in my data set in the evaluation data set is that like the example is that the response is he's skillfully cooked the, the chicken. See, like this is what I want. I wanted to add the adverb to, to the sentence skillfully here, but this is not what like the model was doing. Okay. After training the, the model, we can see like how well it can it does. Uh, okay, so here i'm just like adding like a uh, logging i'm using like i'm logging to a file but there are of course much much better ways to do this for example you can use ml flow or like um, actually this source is from weight and biases which is like wnb they also have uh, um, uh, a logging system or uh, an experiment tracking and it's actually supported by hugging fakes. So you can see, you can use it like with the trainer. You can actually just say report to, you can like fix that parameter to be like ML flow or WMB. You can just set it up very simply. It's very simple to set up. So I'm just like, I'm didn't do it, but okay. So I'm defining this um, uh, Panda data frame that will take the prompt, the generation and like the output uh like for each evaluation part um like uh, the temperature on the top p um this is just like um um a way to to view it well and also like i'm defining um okay so this is um um so I have to like uh, to use the GPU. I have to put my tensors in uh, to to use to uh, from TensorFlow from Python. Sorry, this is like to code a device. Um, so because I'm going to use like uh, the GPU here. Here also I define the like. Um, uh how to compute the the the, um, the accuracy here in this function so i'm not going to go through the whole thing here but um um uh in the validation step that i'm going to do is i'm going to like uh at at some point like uh i'm going to make my model generate a um, uh, response on the evaluation data set and, and um, shouldn't update, like shouldn't do any update, uh, updates at that point. So I'm using this uh, torch, um, no, no gradient, um, uh, decorator. Okay, this is, um, okay. so uh all right so just uh, i mean this this function bas basically just does this model evaluation and um 
and logs the like the whatever I'm measuring to to the to the file. Um, okay, and um, and I can also like uh, define that. Okay, so define that the, the model should be uh, saved at um, uh, at every like each epoch basically. Um, uh, so to save the model, I need the model and the file name, the model for the file name. Uh, basically, um, so I'm 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 saving the model. I'm saving the model. Um, at this, like this is the function just to save the model, basically. And um, okay, so this is actual training, but this training takes uh one hour basically so i'm not gonna run it but uh we should at least test uh, test uh, the model how it works um of course i saved the model here so i saved it to my um um here local machine which is, is like uh here in in um yeah, on the cloud basically because i'm using cloud but <clears throat> uh she's not good because I, once i i was like close this i'm gonna lose it i should have like saved it in in my um b drive but anyway um uh, if i run like um um so at each step or like this is um okay this is the evaluation um Um, this is just like uh, I thought I did some at some point. I need to run it on like a second. So uh, let me try to okay. Let's define like model. Um, uh, I guess like from here. Um, Yeah, so it's so before it was loading the llama model, the original one, but like, um, just um, sorry, going back. Oh, yeah. Model and retrained, and I should like um, to be uh, not <sighs> so it should be here and. Um, okay, not wrong. So.
I don't know if I'm making a mistake or it's taking for a long time for, um, I just actually check on. Okay, so, um, uh, so we are over time. So um, do you have, uh, you don't have another session right now, do you? Um, okay. Okay. Um, so it's not saved correctly. Um, yes, um, okay, so all right, so, um, I say, uh, okay, um. Fine. Uh, right. So I made a mistake when I saved this because, like, I saved it here, but then I saved it on my computer, and then um, that's probably okay. Um, so just to show. Um, sorry. So. We have the login. So you can see like um at so I have three up box and um well actually it was saving um um the sorry so at each step it will um it was calculating the loss and the accuracy and um and then um um the the tray uh, okay so it should be like also a log of the um the log Gonna be able to see if there is an evaluation. So there are also like a so evaluation loss, evaluation accuracy um, at each epoch. So there should be like three three of those. So, so three to three pairs of sorry three pairs of like um, loss and accuracy so uh, in the end of course i did uh three work, so i have like in the end i have like 75 percent accuracy not great but uh, um i didn't train it for long enough or can just um um <clears throat> Um, but yeah, okay, I was logging uh, like uh, the training uh, rate and uh, uh, that's, okay, this is a step. So each step of the training was, was I was, um, uh, of course it was, <clears throat> as I said before, like we had um, 1,051 batches basically. And at each of these steps, it was recording the, like the training uh, training rate, the train loss and accuracy. And at each epoch, I was actually evaluating the model. So, and calculating the loss and accuracy. Um, 
so the prompt table is supposed to show me like uh, uh, the prompt that and um, like uh, it was generated. Um, the thing is that the problem is here again. I cannot really show you each one of these like in details because like I don't have it saved in in my. Um, I don't have access to this. This is like from when I ran it last time. Uh, my mistake. Anyway, so just uh, this was like you don't have to do like you have. You can see that I'm doing using PyTorch directly, and defining like um, um, how to evaluate and stuff like that. And for this, uh, it looks complicated. Um, we have like this uh, very useful library, Transformer Reinforcement Learning, which is also developed by Hugging Face. And uh, okay, I'm not uh, going to. Um, it's wrong. Um, okay, anyway, um, um, okay, I cannot really tell what's, um, what's wrong here. It was running fine before. Anyway, so as I said before, uh, from um, the TRL library train, you can import the supervised fine tuning trainer and training arguments. And in the training arguments, you can define um like uh, the batch size per device thin the learning rate the scheduler type and the number of epochs the gradient accumulation step. so these are actual before i was just like um i was defining them in like um outside basically but here like i have this like uh, um training arguments which like have default values but you can define whatever you don't you want to change from the default. For for example, the number of epochs actually is three by default. Um, I think the learning rate scheduler type is linear actually uh, by default. But this is like um, cosine is uh, um, cosine is like the one that is makes uh, um, um, convergence to a global minima better but okay so this is like a details of like optimizer but anyway and uh, the trainer here what i need is the model itself so loading I load the model first i have the training data set that i defined before um the evaluation data set and then i can tell it to pack so this this is, you see this is not the, the packed one this is the first one i had so this what i had I mean, all of this, forget about all of these steps that we did is going to do it for us. So you see, this is a train that I said that I, after I defined, like I took my, um, my the original, let me just go back to the original, just to, to make sure that I'm not, so, so yeah, I loaded here that I said, it had instruction, input, output, and then I put it together in a prompt, right? I define the prompt um, this way. And then uh, I basically um, put it here in um, uh, at the prompt output an example. So this is the form I'm using here. So just from that, it can go so that that is already ready to be used by the by the TRL TRL library here. So um, so this is a train data set and evaluation data set. I set packing to true, so I don't need to do that alone uh, by myself. Also, I can set the maximum sequence length at 2024, so it will do that for me. So these steps I was talking about, put in examples like this, and then packing them, um, that it will be done uh, 
to do it for me again adding the training arguments that are defined here and then the formatting function um oh actually so actually yeah forget about i define the prompt i actually can define like how i get the prompt from the samples in a formatting function and i can put it here so i don't even like i just here these are just like the samples the data set as it was loaded and split and then i add the format function here and then it will do the whole thing the pre-processing basically applying the formatting function to the data packing it putting it like um with this uh, maximum sequence length and then the all my um training arguments and that after that what i have to do is just run trainer train um well basically that's it um as i said before like you can also define report two to that so that you can get the login directly so this is w and b and we can also you can have ml flow here and you need to like um um of course to import the the required libraries for that um okay so to use laura which is um to like fine tune instead of um, uh, fine tune, like freeze the whole model and only add a small number of uh, like smaller number of parameters to and basically fine tune those. Uh, LoRa is a particular um, method of doing this. It's like uh, defines um, um, a lower ranking matri matrices matrices. So what you need for LoRa is the R is the, like this is the choices you can make is the dimension of the low ranking matrices. Then there is like the um, the scaling and the dropout uh, rates. Um, and to do this, what you need to use is you, you need to use this uh, PEFT, the parameter efficient fine tuning library, which is also supported by Hugging Face. The Hugging Face. Uh, um, library and uh in the like get uh, lora configuration from that library and then here you can define what you want to use um so this r lora alpha lora dropout bias and then uh you have to define the task type so we are using a uh, causal lm um, um because it's a generation basically generation of uh, task right and um uh okay so you can also choose to freeze or unfree unfreeze some of the of the original like uh, this okay so i'm saying like you can add you're adding more and freezing the whole model but you can choose to unfreeze some of these layers here i'm choosing not to none and what you only do going back to the sft trainer we just add this pft configuration to like you add, just add this and that's it now you have laura to to work with so the whole thing is like um you have choices to make but like you can see like the code is not um um i mean the the libraries make things much simpler to to much much concise much more concise uh, so basically, this is what I wanted to say. Um, anyone has any questions? I'm very sorry that I went way over time, way, way over time. Um, um, any questions? Everything is super clear or everything is super confusing yes 
Oh. Go ahead, Alexander. Okay. Uh, truly speaking, I have no question, but I have a suggestion. Uh, may you, in a few minutes, repeating uh, when any other someone. Uh, personally, I have no understand uh, the time it takes and the concept is so much huge so i have not get any hint sorry. i'm sorry to say this no it's okay so what you're saying is that you don't you don't get what i what i talked about at all ah okay in short may you uh, revise and uh, tell me the concept in simple okay. or any, any other time or after all right, so let, let me let me try to summarize. Okay, so maybe I complicated the thing by. Um, uh, okay, let me just. Uh, okay, uh, yes. Okay, what is the difference between parameter tuning and hyperparameter tuning? Uh, so, um, so generally in machine learning, what is a hyperparameter and what is a parameter is that in the model itself, in the like you have these layers of uh, ne neural, you have a neural network, right? You have parameters with are uh, which, which are weights in this case. You have weights in the in the layers. These are just like values for each node. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> these parameters the the model learns basically the model itself through the training it will update these parameters but there are parameters it's called hyperparameters these are parameters that you fix by hand before the training for example one of them is the, tra the learning rate <clears throat> what is the learning rate actually so i mean um how to say this so like i mean i i'm assuming that you have some understanding of neural networks uh, to some extent and you know what i what to at least vaguely what is the weight and what is the learning rate but the learning rate is basically like you have these parameters inside your model the model is trying to understand you the model is getting these vectors which represent words and the model is trying to understand like how to represent uh, how to correctly represent words so it's like that like they, they learn the relationship between words basically and how to generate them so it will it's trying to fix these numbers in the in the vectors and in the um the weights in the um, in the neural network the learning rate is how how to update so sorry how to explain this I don't know if I need to explain what the learning rate is, but anyway, during the training, what happens during the training? You're getting a sample, you're giving your model a sample, a sample um, point or a sample, an example, right? And uh, let's say it's a classification, so you're getting it an input and then the label. And uh, it's supposed to like it takes, uh, uh, so it's, it takes the input alone without the label and the model basically does this generates the label it predicts a label and then compares the label to what i have which is the real one it compares the prediction with the reality it computes a function called the, fun the loss function and goes back to its parameters the weights and tries to change them so that it will reduce the loss so what? Yeah, so I'm just explaining what mathematically is happening. The learning rate is how much it should change the the, or the weights compared to the loss function. Should it, for example, um, if it's getting like, uh, suppose uh, like you want to reduce the weight to some extent, like how to reduce them by by ninety percent or by ten percent? This is what is the learning rate, and you fix this yourself. If you make the learning rate small. That means that the model will, will going to be will be very slow at changing itself, which means that in principle it's going to take a longer time to learn. If you if you make your learning rate big, that means it will going to be quicker, but maybe it will not converge. Converging means like uh, 
these things are minimal or you, you I, i'm assuming that you understand these things but okay what i'm saying is that learning rate is something you fix yourself in the beginning and you can see here like when i defined my training arguments i defined the learning rate to be two multiplied by 10 to the minus four which is like 0 0.0002 um i'm fixing it here so i mean you don't really need to play a lot in this in your case you don't really need to play a lot with the learning rate actually and this uh, because i mean this is like basically more or less um, i mean this value is like a, a convention that is like good way to start if you're going to do multiple trainings or whatever you you, you can like can play with the, all of these parameters so the hyperparameters are these parameters you choose in the beginning. So the learning rate, you also like the number of epochs. How many times do you want your 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 um, your model to go over the train the training set? I'm, I'm choosing three times, but of course I can make I could have made it ten times or like one time. Um, it's up to me. Of course, the choice will affect uh, like things like uh, over overfitting, for example. If I uh, if I train my model with the same training set so many times it will in the end it will reach like a very small uh, loss or a very great accuracy on the training set okay trains and trains so so many times it gets like a 99 percent accuracy for example but this only on the training set once i try it on an evaluation set i'm going to get um a bad number because it's over overfitted on my training sort of my training set so i mean I said a lot of things that maybe you don't know if you don't know about this this uh, like a lot about these uh, terms maybe you got confused but did you get the main idea what is the difference between a parameter and hyperparameter um yeah yeah so aaron asked this question did you get it um did you get what it was like so yeah, in, in the end, parameter is something the model learns by itself, and hyperparameter is something you fix in the beginning before the training. Yes, good. Uh, yeah, I mean, I went over, like maybe over explained. Um, so just to, for Alexander, I'm going to, um, how to say, I'm going to, just let me make a small, um, I want to, So there are steps here that you don't really need to, to go through. So um, um, let me see. Don't want to delete them, but I don't want to like. Okay, so. Uh, so in the start, in the beginning, what you need to care about is that you have you have to prepare your data set. You have to load your model and then you have to fine tune your model uh, using the data set you have. So these are three steps. OK, so in my case, I'm trying I'm taking the Llama 2 7B model. Um, and I want to fine-tune it to follow an instruction so instruction fine-tune what i'm get, um, what i'm doing is i'm getting a data set here i got a data set this is just available um and this data set looks like this so it has instruction input output um it's a list of dictionaries of instruction input output okay what i did is that i defined a function to create a prompt out of this. So a prompt that takes the instruction, the prompt, um, um, it is, uh, okay, so this is a prompt. I defined this prompt function. So like, uh, I'm just like uh, formatting my data, my data in this. So below is the instruction. And then I put like an instruction and just uh and the response for for my model to create the response at at this point and of course what i did is also i split the how to say i split the output 
in my in the evaluation data set so i took a data set uh, defined a format function to to create a prompt out of each sample and i split my data set into evaluation and training data set okay uh, and then what i did is go here right um first i will only what i need to do before this is I, I have to load the model so this is just one line um uh just like uh, you have to define the model and it's like auto um what was it um yeah the auto model for casual inference i will causal lm and I put the model name here. In load this part, I defined my training arguments. These hyperparameters we're talking about, the batch size, the learning rate, the, um, the number of epochs, and defined then the trainer, which is like um, 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 this object, the uh, a supervised fine tuning trainer, which takes the model, the data set, as split for in training and evaluation. I give it also the formatting function, the one that creates the prompts for me. I define these parameters, which is like basically I'm telling the the how to treat the data set. So because this trainer is going to do everything, it's going to take the the, the data set, tokenize it, input it into the model train the model with it, and then, um, um, yeah, so, so I'm just uh, telling it, it how to create the batch, basically. And yeah, um, and then I just train. So this is, this is all that you needed to do. Download the data, upload the data set, split it into evaluation and, and train define your prompt and define these hyperparameters, this trainer object and train. To evaluate, because I want to evaluate, um, in my case, I had to define um, an evaluation function, but actually actually, this trainer also has an evaluation, evaluation um, method. So um, we can use that, just pass it, whatever evaluation method you want to use, or evaluation metric you want to, to measure. And um, there are also options on how, on how many um, uh, like uh, how many times you can like and you can define this instead, which like I think yeah, saving can log can log so you can um, I mean this is the same as this one, but I'm just like defining more parameters here I'm saving I'm logging to to this uh, to WMB and um, saving uh, at each epoch so there's also an evaluation part yeah so evaluation strategy at each epoch and um, yeah so, so do you get like um, this summarization? Does it make sense to you, Alexander? Yeah, we're, we are, we're... Yes, yes. Thank you, Mutanan. I'll get some hint. But uh, yeah, we have already tuned and uh, evaluate the new model based on based on our uh, tuned criteria. Yeah. So you can do the evaluation at each epoch, but you can do it also at the end if you want. Um, I, I wanted to load the model and, so, and and show you like the example that we used before, but like I made a mistake in saving it, so I couldn't I couldn't upload it again. Um, okay, but yeah, so yeah, the evaluation it depends on like what you are trying. So what you are trying to do um, in your case. Um, I don't know if you're going to fine tune uh, your model for like classification, you can use accuracy, for example, and or like um, 
what else? So you can use the F, F1 score, recall this this matrices that you can um, you can uh, you can use to evaluate your your model on okay. the on the evaluation data set. Yeah. Okay, good. After this long period uh, tuning, what is our criteria? Maybe the performance is low or maybe the performance is good. Is there any threshold after tuning? We can has our tuning process is good or not? Is there any I, threshold? I mean, there is no. We don't have a threshold. What you can what you can do is that you can compare. I mean, you can compare your the fine tuned model to the original model, or you can compare its like its performance on an, a different model. Let's say you took like for example, you took Mestro. I don't know what what it took Lama maybe took Lama okay. two seven B and you fine tuned it. On the side, you also have Mestral that is just available, right? So you can you can compare the performance of your fine tuned Lama model with the with the model that uh, with Mestral which you didn't fine tune. It's just like the model as it is. You can compare the performance of the two. And to compare the performance, you should like have a matrix. So like whatever you suppose that you measure the accuracy and you say like, I get an accuracy of like 90% with my fine tuned um, model, but my cell is getting like a uh, 92%. It's a little better or maybe it's a little worse or whatever, depending on what you get. Uh, um, and of course you can have multiple, there are multiple evaluation metrics, metrics you can measure on. You can also the evaluation depends on what is the evaluation data set you are using, of course. Anyway, you can compare what was the point of evaluation is that you can compare your model, the fine tune one, to the original one. So your fine tuning was it did it make the model better? Okay. And you can compare it to a model that it wasn't fine tuned to see that if if did you fine tune your model in a way that super fast like um, other models that are available. So uh, in the ideal case, I mean, you're also so, uh, fine tuning different models, right? So you, you are choosing like, a, I mean, your group fine tuned Llama and then other group found fine tuned another model. And then you can compare basically between these two. If you, I mean, you're not going to be able to do that uh, yourself because like you don't have access to your, uh, to other groups models, but um I'm just saying, in principle, this is the point of evaluation. So does this answer your question? Yes, totally. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. All right. So we went way over time. I'm very sorry for that. Um, uh, I wanted to explain like uh, some concepts in to just for you to be like, uh, to be like doing this fine tuning with some understanding. I don't know if I, if I managed to do that, but anyway, I'm sorry that I went way over time. If there are more questions, uh, please ask on Slack. Um, and yeah, so good luck with your work and with your submissions later. And thank you for being here.